Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Angela Carlson. I was diagnosed with breast cancer a few months after I turned 40. And this video is all about my diagnosis story. I have been not necessarily putting off making this video since I got diagnosed in August of 2021. And by the way, I am filming it like five days before Christmas, so it is December. Um, as you can tell by my appearance, I have just finished chemo. So I am already um, four and a half months into my breast cancer journey and into treatment. It has taken me a while to make this video uh, for a few reasons. First off, I did not realize chemo would completely knock my socks off energy-wise. And also just having the emotional energy to go back to those few weeks of getting some symptoms that I thought were concerning and then getting those checked out and then confirming that it was in fact breast cancer. But I promised myself once I got the energy again and once I got the time that I would share my story on YouTube because when I first got diagnosed, I know that I looked up so many women younger than me in their 30s and some even in their 20s that were diagnosed with breast cancer. And those few weeks from diagnosis to when treatment starts is just so scary. I didn't know anyone personally that had been diagnosed with cancer. I wasn't close to anyone that had been diagnosed with breast cancer, I should say. It didn't run in my family that I knew of. I didn't have any friends that had been diagnosed with breast cancer. So I looked to strangers on the internet um, to share their journey. Those stories helped me realize that I wasn't alone. All of my feelings were valid. And I promised myself that I would share my story as well once I felt up to it. Figure it's worth the time and the energy to go back to that scary time back in August and when I was first diagnosed. And if it helps one woman get that overdue mammogram or to just feel like something's off with her body and get it checked out, it's worth it as well as a woman that has been recently diagnosed that's feeling all the feelings right now them feel not as alone it's worth it to make this video just wanted to preface this video with saying that before i go into my diagnosis story i did have physical symptoms that led me to do a self-exam which then led me to go to the doctor and get that mammogram which confirmed that it was in fact breast cancer so the first thing i want to do is just share a little bit about what those physical symptoms were that made me think that something was off and then it might be breast cancer. A little bit about me, I turned 40 in May, never had had a mammogram before this year. I always went to my annual checkups, always, even last year in 2020, when a lot of people were not going to the doctor, I still went to my annual checkup in August of 2020. My doctor did perform a breast exam on me and found nothing. Every year, August, I never miss my annual appointment at my gynecologist's office. August of 2021, I was scheduled for my annual appointment. In that appointment, I was gonna ask my doctor about my mammogram because I did think that my insurance covered mammograms starting at the age of 40. Since I had turned 40 in May, I figured, okay, I'll just get my mammogram. I'll ask him in August. I didn't, you know, I didn't worry about calling right when I turned 40 on May 30th. I thought, okay, well, I'm gonna see him at the end of August. I'll ask him about it then when I go get my checkup and life will be good, life will go on, life will continue. 2021 started out pretty normal. Right when I turned 40, I have a four-year-old and a two-year-old little boy, I have an amazing husband. Life was good, life was good. Life still is good, but life was, life was really good back then. I was feeling a little bit more tired than normal this spring around my birthday, but I have two little boys that are a lot of energy. I also wasn't sleeping well. I just felt like my body was kind of off. As a matter of fact, I was checking out books from the library about gut health because I thought maybe I was allergic to something that I was eating on a regular basis or maybe I needed to change up my diet. I would wake up in the middle of the night uh, in that, you know, right around my 40th birthday, I kept kind of waking up in the middle of the night with a sense of impending doom. I don't know how to say it, but I, again, I'm a natural worrier. So I thought, well, maybe I'm just something, something felt off looking back, but I couldn't quite pinpoint it. I was very hormonal. I will say that much. I could tell I was very hormonal. As a matter of fact, I even made note to myself to talk to my doctor at my annual exam in August about changing up my birth control pills because I felt just off hormonally. 
and just really tired. But other than that, everything was fine. Early June, I did do a self-exam. Now I am not one that does a self-exam every month on the exact same day. Looking back, I kicked myself for doing that, but I would do them when I remembered to do them. But I did a very, let's just put it, rushed self-exam in early June and I felt nothing. Middle of July, all of a sudden I woke up one morning and underneath my right arm was sore, almost like I had pulled a muscle or I had done like too many push-ups on one side, which was weird because I, at that point, I don't think I was working out very much. I did feel some soreness under my right side as well as it just looked more um, enlarged, I would say. And then my right breast looked a little bit more filled out. It didn't hurt or anything. It just looked more filled out than my left, which uh, fuller, I should say. And normally my breasts were pretty symmetrical. I thought, hmm, that looks, that's weird. So uh, a couple days passed, the right underarm pain did not go away. Uh, okay, well, I'm gonna Google it, which of course you never wanna Google anything because everything's gonna lead you to think that you have cancer. But I Googled right underarm pain and one of the first things was that it was a sign of breast cancer. At this point too, when I had started feeling physical symptoms, my right underarm and my right breast being fuller, I threw out my birth control. I said, forget it, I'm gonna be seeing my OBGYN in a month and a half. I'm just going to throw out my birth control and stop, stop taking it. Cause it, again, feeling super hormonal, extra tired. I'm thinking at this point, maybe it has something to do with my birth control pills, my diet, something. I start feeling these physical symptoms, Google it, breast cancer. I don't even think about breast cancer up until this point. It doesn't run in my family. I'm 40 years old. Like when you think of breast cancer, you think of women in their fifties and sixties that get it. You don't think about women in their twenties and thirties and early forties that get it. They don't even start screening until forties. So why would they, why would someone younger than that get it? That all of a sudden was on my radar, kind of starting to freak out a little bit. Now, mind you, middle of July, I was also getting ready for my menstrual cycle. My menstrual cycle was always the last week of every month. And um, I was PMSing at this point too, like I was having some cramps. And so I thought, well, maybe this is just like a hormone surge before my period comes. Because I also Googled when the best time to do a good self-exam was, and it was after your menstrual cycle. So I thought, okay, I'm gonna wait, I'm gonna hold off until my period comes um, because I was having cramps. I, I was feeling just crazy. <laughs> I was feeling crazy with the hormones. I told myself to just, just wait until my period comes and goes and then do the self-exam. Underarm pain is not getting worse, but not getting better. And my right breast is still looking fuller until my menstrual cycle is ending up. So Saturday, July 31st of 2021, I have my husband take the boys. I take a bath. I relax. I listen to a murder podcast because that's what makes me relax because I'm weird that way. I get out of the bath. I lay down. I googled how to do a proper self-exam, which shocker, I didn't really do a good one back in June. Um, but I laid down. I put my right arm underneath my right arm underneath my head. We'll touch. You, you can Google it if you want to know how to do a proper one because it is so important to learn. I did a very thorough breast exam. I did it first. I started on my left side because I wasn't having any symptoms on my left. My left breast looked normal. My left under my arm looked flat and normal. And so I did one on my left, felt nothing, did one on my right and immediately felt a pretty large lump, the upper part of my right breast. And then of course, under my arm was inflamed and that was tender to the touch. Sorry about my fingernails. This is what they look like after chemo. Just to let you know, cancer is not pretty. That is for sure. There is no vanity in cancer. I immediately feel the lump, my heart sinks, I start crying, um, I grab Phil, he closes the door, because again, our kids are playing in the other room, and I said, can you feel this? And he goes, yeah, I can feel it. And I, my heart just I just sinks, I just know something, I just, I just know, I know it's cancer, I know it is. Um, and I'm in a panic, I start crying, I call my mom, I'm crying, and she's like, you know, trying to talk me off the ledge. At this point, there's no confirmation that it's cancer, but I just, in my gut, I'm like, this is why I've been feeling so off the last two months. I just feel like I've been going crazy. This has gotta be what it's been. Of course, this is a Saturday night, July 31st. The doctor's office is closed until Monday morning. I know that I'm gonna be seeing my gynecologist at the end of August, but I don't wanna wait that long. There's just something in my gut that's telling me, girl, you have got to call first thing Monday morning and get an appointment to get seen sooner. Monday, I'm just pacing, I'm looking at the clock. It's 
they, they open at 8.30, I call at 8.20, and I get someone that just barely answers the phone, and I say, hey, uh, just so you know, I have my annual scheduled with my doctor at the end of August, but I found a lump over the weekend, and I really, really need to see him. She looks at the appointment book and says, he has no open appointments until your annual at the end of August. She says, but you can get in. There's one spot left with the nurse tomorrow at 4.30. It's the last spot of the week. And I said, absolutely, I will take it. Tuesday, August 3rd, 2021, I go in to the 4.30 appointment. I meet the nurse for the first time. It's actually the first time I had ever met her. She examines me. She says, you know, you're barely 40. She definitely felt the lump as well and then felt under the arm. And she said, you know, I'm 99% chance that it's just a cyst or a hormone surge or something of that nature. Um, she said, you don't have any nipple discharge. Your breast is not indented. Um, she said, uh, you know, it doesn't look like a rash or it's inflamed at all. She goes, I'm 99% sure that it's just some sort of hormone surge. But since you just turned 40 in May, let's get you scheduled for a mammogram anyway. And, um, cause we were going to, we would probably schedule for a mammogram at your, at your end of August appointment anyway. And so we will just do that. Um, so they got me scheduled for a mammogram for that Friday. I had my, my dad was able to watch my little boys. So I could go to my mammogram. I went in, um, that's a whole production with your first mammogram. It's, you know, I'm here, I'm, I'm nervous, but I'm also just, I want to know the answers. I want to know what this lump is. I want to know if it's cancer. Uh, I'm nervous about it. I'm just, but I'm happy that I got in. I'm happy that my dad was able to come up and watch my kids because it's with childcare, it can be rough to find people to watch your babies while you're going to these doctor's appointments, right? So they give you like a whole little locker to undress and give you a robe. They call me in to get the mammogram and they're moving me around a little bit on my left side, but a lot on my right side. So already I'm thinking they're seeing something. It's taking a while on the right side. They're getting lots of images. Yes, it's uncomfortable, but I'm just happy to have gotten into an appointment less than a week after I found my lump. I'm just happy that this process is moving along fairly quickly. Done with the mammogram. They lead me into a waiting area and they say, well, we're gonna have the doctor look at this and then we'll let you know if we need further imaging. And I'm going, okay. Okay, that's kind of weird. Almost immediately, they tell me that the doctor saw my images and he needs an ultrasound, like within 10 minutes. And I'm going, this is weird, because if you've been to wait for a doctor to see your stuff, <laughs> you know, it takes a while. So I'm going, okay. They take me into another room with another tech and we're talking about our kids and she's, you know, laying me down and she's definitely concentrated on my right breast and under my right arm. And she's taking, again, lots of images. And she tells me that the doctor will review and see if he wants to get a biopsy. Five minutes later, um, the doctor comes into the room. <laughs> again, I'm going, okay, I'm getting a lot of attention here. I feel like they're finding something and they're just not letting me know what it is. The doctor comes in the room and he says, you know, I definitely am seeing some things that I wanna get biopsied. Uh, we can get you in next week. And then the tech said, actually said, actually, we just have, we have an opening in 30 minutes if you want to get her biopsied in 30 minutes. My dad was already at my house watching my kids. I said, absolutely, in that slot in 30 minutes, I can do the biopsy today. So he says, okay, I'll be back in 30 minutes. So he comes back in 30 minutes. He explains the biopsy procedure to me. At this point, I'm going, I have cancer. Like, this is just so weird. I've heard other people have mammogram experiences and none of them included ultrasound imaging, as well as the doctor coming in almost immediately and saying that he wants to get a biopsy. Like, this is not normal. And so I'm thinking the whole time, like he's kind of talking to me about the biopsy and I'm just going, okay, it's cancer, it's cancer. I just want to get this done so he can tell me that it's cancer. Explaining the biopsies, explaining that he's going to, you know, they're going to numb me up and then they're going to take three samples from my right breast and three samples from underneath my arm. You know, he's doing these, he's getting these biopsies and they put little clips in and he's explained to me that they insert a little clip where they biopsy because if it is cancer, they'll remove it during surgery. But if it isn't cancer and suspicious area, they um will know that it's already been looked at so when it comes up on future mammograms they'll know that it's that it was already looked at and biopsied um so he gets that so that process gets done it bruises me up really good i have pictures of that even but i won't i won't show the, those with you on here because i did take some pictures of it they tell me that they will have the results because this again this is on a friday 
uh, afternoon late. So they say they will have the results by Monday or Tuesday and that the my doctor's office will call me with those results. <sighs> okay, so then I feel like I can breathe a little bit. I know that I got it checked out. At this point, I'm pretty sure it's cancer, even though he didn't say anything, the text didn't say anything, but just how they were acting. And after the biopsy, they put the clips in, they have you do another mammogram to make sure that the clips are registering on the mammogram. So they're moving me around a lot, especially on my right side. And I go home. And that weekend was a blur. I didn't hardly eat. I didn't hardly sleep. At this point, I'm going, when am I going to get the bad news? Um, Because I was pretty certain at this point that it was going to be bad. Weekend passes. I'm trying to get my mind off of it, but obviously it's at the forefront. Monday, comes and I have my phone on me all day. Every every single time my phone rings, I just jump, but it was pretty much either my mom or Phil at this point who knew that I had found a lump um, that were asking if I had gotten results yet. And I said, no, haven't gotten any results yet. So Monday comes and goes, there's no phone call. Tuesday comes, beautiful day, beautiful August day. And Tuesday morning, nothing. Again, I get maybe a text message from my mom. And then Phil, of course, wants to know if, if I've heard from the doctor's office, nothing. Around four o'clock, still no word. And so I'm starting to think to myself, okay, they said Monday or Tuesday, no news is good news when it comes to this kind of thing. So maybe, maybe I was wrong. Maybe it is just a benign something, a benign cyst. Maybe my gut was completely wrong. Maybe I was reading the room on Friday during my mammogram slash ultrasound slash biopsy. Um, and how the doctor just seemed very rushed to get that done. Maybe I was reading that wrong. Before 4.30 passes, Phil calls me, asks me if I've heard from the doctor. I say no. Um, he did need to go pick up a few things at the grocery store. He asked me if I needed anything at the store. I gave him some things that we were running low on and all that good stuff. And he calls me and says, okay, I'll pick that up on the way home. This is about 4.30, 4.45 at this point. Um, I'm out in the garden. It's a beautiful sunny day. My boys are out playing with the garden hose. They're giggling. They're just having so much fun with splashing each other with water. A really beautiful, peaceful Tuesday afternoon. Gorgeous day. Gorgeous day. This was August 10th. And then right around five o'clock, I get a call from my OBGYN's office and I saw on the caller ID. So I answer and, you know, I say, hello. And it's the nurse that I had only met the one time that I met that previous Tuesday, so a week before. And she said, you know, hi, um, are you alone? And I said, well, no, I have my boys with me. And she says, well, is your, do you have your husband with you? And I said, no, I said, he's, uh, he's about an hour away. He'll be home in about an hour. And she said, well, I really want your husband to be with you when I give you this news. And I said, well, obviously it's not good news, but I said, I have my boys with me and they give me nothing but joy. And I said, whew. And I said, um, just tell me, just tell me I can handle it. Because I remember I looked right where my boys were in the yard and I know exactly where my oldest was and my youngest was and how they were turned towards each other and they were both giggling and what they were holding. Cause I said, this is gonna be the last snapshot I have of this life before cancer. And she said, it's cancer. And she said, and under your arm is cancer too. And I said, okay. Actually, I don't think I said, okay. I think I said, I think I dropped the F-bomb. I'm pretty certain of it, pretty certain. Um, and I said, okay, I, I, what now? Because I just didn't know. I didn't know. I asked her what stage, because I didn't know. I, I didn't know anything about anything. And obviously, you know, they don't stage you till surgery. I still don't technically know my stage. I know it's between a two and a three because it, now I know when she said under your arm meant that it traveled to your lymph node. And the second it travels to your lymph node or at least one of them, you're a stage, automatically a stage two. Um, but uh, she just said, just have your phone on you tomorrow. You're going to get a flurry of phone calls. She says, you're young, you're in shape. Um, She's like, you're gonna do great. You're gonna, you're gonna beat this. You know, this nurse that I met for 20 minutes that told me that 90, she was 99% sure it was just a hormonal surge. And I'm just thinking, what do you know, lady? <laughs> I just hate reliving that day so much. God, I miss every day up until that point because everything changed in an instant.
I basically ask, what now? Like, what what now? Because you, you are told you have cancer. And she goes, well, you know, obviously, we don't know a lot. We just know that it's cancer. And um, she goes, have your phone on you tomorrow. We're going to get all the referrals in for your cancer team. And just have your phone on you tomorrow. You, you don't have to call anyone, which that did feel good. That did feel good that she said, I don't have to worry about trying to find an oncologist or a surgeon. She goes, you are going to hear from from everyone, everyone's office tomorrow. And she was right. I got a flurry of phone calls um, the next day. But uh, so that felt, that was the one comforting thing was that I did not have to worry about calling people or trying to reach out or find, I, I just, that was nice that she, that they said they were going to get all the referrals in and that, that I could, um, that I was going to get a lot of calls starting the next day about what the next steps would be. So that was one reassuring thing, but that was like it. I just remember hanging up the phone and just my heart sinking and not really crying. I didn't really cry yet. I um, definitely didn't call my husband right away. I wanted him to come home. I wanted to tell him in person. I kind of wanted him to enjoy like, like 45 more minutes of just a normal life because I knew our life was gonna change. Um, a lot <laughs> as soon as he found out too and I just kind of wanted to be happy for a few more minutes um, before I told him the news and so I just our inflatable pool was out the kids were playing in the pool I was just numb um, and then Phil came home and he had big grocery bags in his hands and I couldn't wait I just couldn't wait for him to get in the house I, I told him right away I said I said it's cancer and he said, shut up, shut up, you're joking, you're joking. And I said, no, I'm not joking. And it wasn't until I started crying where he was like, oh. And I'm like, yeah. Called my mom, because she was the only other person that knew about what was going on. Well, my dad too. Uh, and I called, and she took it really good. I'm sure she broke down after, but she took it okay. And so um, I told her, which was hard. I'm sure she broke down after I told her and after I got off the phone, but she was strong for me on the phone. And so, and then we sent like just a group family text to both um, my side of the family and Phil's side of the family about just that I got diagnosed with breast cancer. We just wanted to let everyone know. And I told some of my friends and just, um, it was really rough really rough did lots of text messages just because I didn't want to call people and like break down oh uh, so that is how I found out <laughs> I knew I was gonna cry at the end of this that is how I found out that I just hate reliving that day so much but obviously it's a day that's changed our lives forever uh, in an instant your life changes forever and Oh, a lot has happened since then. I mean, I'm going to do more videos, but I just wanted to talk specifically about my diagnosis story. I'm still here. Um, both my oncologist and my surgeon are very optimistic about this being curable. I just finished chemo. I got through that. Life stopped for a second, but it's still plugging away. There's still some beautiful, beautiful things to enjoy, even when you are going through cancer treatment. There's a lot of hope in the journey. Which is, which is great. There's a lot of great treatments out there. I mean, 2021, it's a lot different. There's just a lot of breast cancer treatments out there, which is, which is fantastic. It's not easy at all. Um, I have had a few people tell me, oh, well, you got the easy cancer. No cancer is the easy cancer. So if you're recently diagnosed and you hear people say that too, um, you can tell them to shove it. I mean, you can do that too. I haven't specifically said that to anyone, but I definitely was like, what are you talking about? You are talking, you are coming from a place of someone that has never gone through cancer, okay? Because there is nothing easy about this. Thank you so much for watching. This took a lot of energy for me to even film. So I just appreciate you so much for even watching this. Um, this video is about 45 minutes long before I edit it, so I'm going to be editing quite a bit out. It just was hard to go. It's just hard to go back to those really bad days, you know. But there's going to be great days ahead, 
and I got through chemo at this point, which is exciting. Yay! I will definitely be doing a future video soon about what happened between diagnosis and when I started treatment. That was about a 17-day time frame, so I want to walk through that with you guys as well and sort of kind of what happens after they tell you it's cancer versus and then when you start your treatment plan, which is the scariest one of 17 days. It was the longest and scariest time frame of my life. Well, we will just say that, but I will definitely plan. I definitely plan on filming that video in the next week or so when I just recover from filming this video emotionally, as well as I'm going to talk about my chemo experience too. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this and know that if you're recently diagnosed, you're not alone. Feel all the feelings. It's okay to cry. It's okay to be upset. It's okay to be bitter. I've had my bitter days too. Cancer is what a teacher it is. What a pain in the butt, but also um, it has been the best teacher I've ever had. It has taught me more life lessons in the last four and a half months than I've been taught the first 40 years of my life. Puts a lot into perspective. I can't thank you enough for taking the time to watch this video. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them. I will read every single one. So much for watching.